I have already published a video showing some tests I was doing with my system running on Evernote Home, but things change, the system matured. We'll go to the computer in a moment and I'll show you the mechanics, how it works, but I encourage you to also read the article link below to understand the reasons why I'm doing this. I use the full-size calendar widget because it's the one that gives me two perspectives. I can go to the past and check old meetings, or I can go to the future and prepare myself for an upcoming meeting. The right-hand side works as a guide for each day, and because I try to always prepare myself for upcoming meetings, it is just a matter of clicking the icon and get to the meeting when the time comes. But if for some reason I didn't prepare myself for a meeting, I can always click the icon, but now the icon will create a new node for that meeting. Before we move on, I have to talk a little bit about tasks. I do not use the tasks widget. I do not go to the tasks drawer. I do use tasks inside nodes, but they are just another element, another item in that note. The note itself is my to-do because it contains all the information, including tasks, that help me decide to do and what to do or if I'm not doing anything with that note. And that's why most of the widgets you see from now on are filtered notes widgets. They help me create a workflow, including or removing tasks and tags and other elements in the note. I have two widgets for my consulting business. The follow-up works like this. Notes in the consulting notebook with tasks that are not completed. I'll have here two kinds of notes. One of potential clients that I talked to in the past and I added a task to follow up with them. Also, notes for my ongoing clients. Maybe I have to research something for the next meeting or anything they ask me will be there. This is an example of tasks working just as a trigger to make the notes appear in this widget. The filter for ongoing clients works like this. By the way, all my current clients, past clients, and the ones that didn't become my clients, they are all in the consulting notebook. I use tags to create different groups, and this is what's happening here on the widget. So I have everything in the consulting notebook, but with the clients tag, meaning that they are in progress. I'm working with them right now. And minus the done tag. When I'm done with the client, that note will get the done tag, and this will make that note disappear from this widget. The YouTube notebook works just like the consulting notebook. I have everything related to this channel inside that notebook. Past videos I have already worked and published, new ideas, videos I'm working on like this one, things that I have to do on the channel, everything is there and also grouped by tags. Story is a name I borrowed from Agile and the widget works like this. I have here notes inside the YouTube notebook with the tag story minus the tag whip minus the tag done. So let's go to that notebook and story and back. Okay, now we have a note. The notes here are more than ideas. I will work on a video, but I still have to do some research, write the script, and so on. When it's time to work on that video, this note will go to my whip, work in progress widget. All I have to do is add the tag whip, and when I get back to home, now I have that note inside the whip widget. And take a look, it disappeared from the story widget because in the story widget, we have the minus whip tag. And finally, when that video is recorded, all I have to do is done. And now when we come back to home, that video will disappear from that widget. 
You may be now asking yourself why create all this complex system of adding tasks, filter note widget with the minus tag. At least in my case, I think it's because I'm less prone to make mistakes. I it's harder to choose the wrong tag and delete the wrong tag. And also it's easier to add instead of keep looking for the right tag to remove. Keep in mind that once I create that widget, I don't have to do anything else. All I have to do is add tags. My default notebook is called Notepad. And even before Evernote Home, I was treating it as a scratch pad. So the scratch pad widget is the perfect companion to this notebook. It's just like a sticky notepad for me. I used to take notes here and then throw them away when that was done. And this is the same thing I do with the scratch pad. It's rare, but sometimes something there will become a note and that note will be stored in my default notebook, the notepad. I have just one pinned note. It's a summary note of all my documents I have stored in Evernote. There's already a video about this here in the channel, so I'm not gonna talk about that today. Watch that video if you wanna learn how to do it. Let's talk about one thing that I changed. I have two notebooks for my trips. One is called trips and I keep there all past trips. And I do have a trips in progress. As you already might know, I love the word whip. It's so easy to understand that that is in progress. That's why the trips in progress or future trips are inside the notebook trips whip. And this notebook is a shortcut so I can get to this very fast. I removed it from home because I'm keeping there only the things I'm working on almost every day or every day. Although I travel a lot, I don't travel every day, so it's okay to keep it in the shortcuts. And this is what defines what I'll keep as a widget in home or what I'll keep as a shortcut. If I use it every day or almost every day, home is the perfect place to keep it. But if I need it a lot, but not every day, it's okay if it is a shortcut. To learn more about Evernote Home, watch this other video. And if this was useful for you, I'd appreciate the thumbs up. See you soon.